Cube. In many ways, it is the apotheosis of Magic the Gathering. From budget $100 cubes to fully blinged out power cubes, to popper cubes and set cubes and even mono blue cubes? They are exciting, they are fun, they are creative, and they are possibly the best Magic gameplay experience out there. There's just one problem. They are a pain in the backside to shuffle and create packs for. In Cube, you essentially design your own Magic the Gathering draft set using existing cards, but in in order to draft that cube, you need to take its oftentimes 1,000 and up card contents and craft it into booster packs from which to draft. It can be sloppy, it can be time consuming, and sometimes it can be discouraging. There's got to be a product I can purchase to aid me in this simple task. New from Dragon Shield are the reusable cube shells, meant, among other things, to offer an organizational tool for creating cube packs. Cube shells are essentially very small deck boxes, but I like to think of them more as resealable booster packs, each able to hold 20 single-sleeved cards or 15 double-sleeved cards, so that you can literally create your own booster packs to draft from. As someone who likes set cubes in particular, I find this type of product helpful, as unlike in a normal singleton cube, my set cubes, such as my Innistrad cube, have multiple copies of commons and uncommons in it, in order to better simulate the experience of drafting a booster box of original Innistrad. So being able to elegantly and efficiently create booster packs with a fixed rarity of 10 commons, 3 uncommons, and 1 rare or mythic is just wonderful. The Dragon Shield cube shell are effective and durable in their own right, but the real question is how well do they compare to the Cubamajig's resealable card boxes that function pretty much the same way. At first you might think the answer will come down to a matter of taste, style, and personal needs, and indeed there are those elements there. But there are a few glaringly obvious superiorities to the Cubamajig's boxes. The first thing that stands out is size. What can I say? It matters here, because the Dragon Shield Shield will not fit inside most deck boxes, and the Cubamajigs will. Now this gave the Cubamajigs added benefit, as it could be a comfortable place to hold a sideboard, or perhaps your tokens, it even holds those small d6 dice, whatever you want, and then just slide it into your deck box, any deck box. If it holds sleeved Magic the Gathering cards, it'll hold a Cubamajigs. Unfortunately, it will not hold a Dragon Shield cube shell. The cube shell will fit inside pretty much anything that holds a top loader, but that means it's a no-go for things like a uh, Ultra Pro Satin Tower, an Ultimate Guard Sidewinder, pretty much anything else. That also means some boxes that people favor as cube storage boxes will work just fine with the Cube Majigs, but not with the Dragon Shield Cube shells. Again, the shells will fit in anything that'll hold top loaders, so they're okay to go in Ultimate Guard archives and Quiver Time carrying cases, and some, though not all, of the BCW archival boxes, so overall, that is a bit of a disappointment. Opening and closing the Dragon Shield shells is as easy as opening and closing a deck box. This is the main advantage it has over the Cuba Majigs card boxes. As with Cuba Majigs, you are fumbling with the tab a little bit, and anyone who has these knows that it takes a little getting used to. It's not a big deal, but it's certainly more convenient on the shell. Unfortunately, there is a critical error when it comes to Dragon Shield cube shells, not in terms of the quality of materials of construction, but the manner of construction. Now, I will show you close-up shots of this in just a moment, but the way in which the plastic is folded into itself to create the shell leaves seams and obstructions on the interior that your cards can catch upon. In fact, not just can catch upon, but I've found using these for uh, a while now that almost always, I'm just gonna go ahead, I've got 15 double-sleeved cards here, and I'm just sliding them down, and I'm pretty confident, yep. Now, I'm applying pressure, and it's not going down because it's actually caught upon one of the interior folds, and so I have to kind of kajigger it a bit. And as I'm conjiggering it, what I began to notice with my sleeves, and unfortunately I had such confidence in these that I used my actual cube before my test sleeves, is that when you're doing that, it's creating a friction, which scuffed up a few of my sleeves. I'll show you that in a moment as well. So you can get it in there, but 
it seriously is just about every time that you take your cards and try and drop them in, again, you can see they're not all falling in. This one here, pressed a little friction. This one here, there it goes. Is this a critical error? I feel that it is, because not only is there a risk to damaging, at the very least, your card's sleeves, which anyone who knows about sleeving a cube knows that that's a major problem, but there's a consistency to this happening. Sometimes I show off products and it's a long shot that potential damage could occur, but I want to warn against it anyway. With the cube shells, it happens regularly, and that is alarming. So while there are still some uses for a cube shell beyond just cube, again, these will hold those small D6s, and maybe you just want to put a couple sleeved tokens in here where it isn't so tight. But the problem of the cube shell construction is the critical one, as that interior obstruction has the potential to damage your cards or dent your sleeves. As I use the cube shells, I would struggle to slide in a complete pack of 15 double-sleeved cards. This isn't a sometimes problem. I encountered it almost every time I tried to use these. One or two cards would always catch, not slide in easily. And then as I took out my cards, I'd find bends and marks on the sleeves. Oh no, my precious Dragon Shield Loki art mat sleeves. Those are A-plus sleeves, and I got my entire Innistrad cube sleeved up in them. That was a lot of work and effort. I don't want damaged and dinged up sleeves. In comparison, there is no inner seam in the Cubamajigs boxes. So while they are a little irritating to have to construct, it's worth it because you have a smooth interior where there's absolutely nothing for your cards to catch on. It's simply not possible. So while at first glance, those Dragon Shield cubes might seem a little more durable, the superior product here is the Cubamajigs. Cubamajigs are also far superior when it comes to aesthetics, as the Dragon Shield shells are currently only offered in the most basic of primary colors. Whereas Cubamajigs literally come not only in basic colors, but a wide variety of artwork. Many artworks, in fact, by actual MTG artists. Considering how personal a cube is to its creator, getting to present vibrant, amazing artwork on your packs goes a long way. And again, Cubamajigs even has art from popular MTG artists. So that's a big added benefit. A pack of eight cube shells costs $9.99 US, whereas Cubamajigs offers packs of 25 for $24.99. Cube shells only come in the packs of eight, but you can order a single Cubamajig case for $2.99, which I suppose is nice if you just want one or two for your sideboard, etc. Now here's where Cubamajigs does have a bit of an issue in that they need to be shipped. And yeah, buyer pays for shipping, which can get expensive, especially in this current crisis, where shipping costs will run high depending on your country and also have a fairly long wait. But again, that's just the nature of having to order something shipped. I'd much rather know that my cards are protected, and in all honesty, the Cubamajigs boxes are going to last you, well, for life, or darn near. If it were just an issue of these not fitting in deck boxes or even some cube cases, it wouldn't be so bad. Certainly, if it were just an issue of aesthetics, it wouldn't be so bad. But the chance of damage, even just in the form of dings and dents on sleeves, is just too high with these, and in fact, it isn't much of a chance. It's almost a certainty. The issue happened to me pretty much every time I tried to slide my cards in and out. That, for me, makes this a no-go. So whereas this is a well-constructed product in terms of durability of materials and ease of opening and closing, I suppose, the grade is a D, as I do not recommend, and I do not think you should buy. I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. If you'd like to learn more about Cube, Tellarian Community College has an entire series of Cube instructional videos, from introductory to beginners, intermediate, and even advanced Cube construction lessons. I will link those videos in this video's description. And if you are interested in your very first Cube, but don't really want to build it yourself, then you might check out my video on whether or not it's worth it to pick up a Card Kingdom Starter Cube, a pre-constructed cube product that is available for not a lot of cash, but offers quite a lot for the brand new Cube Affectionado. And you can help me out incredibly by remembering to like, 
share with a friend, or hit that subscribe button. Cool, that'll be fun to pick up. The things I do for y'all. Oh God, I'm gonna have to pick all of those up.